I seriously have no idea what's going on with this bug. Am I entering the fourth dimension? Is this what they meant about adding another dimension to Minecraft? Editing is taking longer than expected. But don't worry, I got to the portal before 1.18 released. If nothing else, this journey has certainly changed the way I look at Minecraft. When I heard that Mojang was planning to reduce how frequently villages spawn, I thought that was a terrible idea. But now it's like, yeah, villages could do with being less common. At multiple points, I thought about leaving the maps in one of the chests that generated in a village. But then I would think, I still have three open inventory slots. I'll definitely see another village before they're filled. Also, I was a little salty about not having the inventory space to take any diamonds that were in the chests with me. Me. I've also gained a heightened appreciation for the spyglass. Since I'm on bedrock, I don't have access to any of those mods that let you zoom in. I can't tell you how many times the spyglass made the difference between me noticing a village or not. Oh, and do you remember that glitch I mentioned in the previous video? Where both the boat and the mob in it would sometimes disappear when I exited the boat? Well, at this point, I was getting tired of it. And I wondered if just hopping back into the boat would fix it. I was not prepared for the result. Honestly, I was afraid of where I would end up once I left the boat. It did put me back at where I had re-entered the boat, but I wasn't eager to ever try that again. Speaking of lessons learned, while roofed forests are okay to navigate by horse, normal forests are the absolute worst. My favorite traveling method was definitely by boat. You don't have to try jumping over terrain, and it's easy to look ahead. Speaking of boats, I've played this game for five years now, and I still haven't done another hub in any of my survival worlds. But this journey has me thinking it might be cool to set up another ice boat path to help me get between spawn and the end portal more quickly. I do expect Mojang to announce an end update in the near future, after all. Of course, I made sure to check out any desert temples and other structures for more golden apples. And and I passed by this shipwreck which was fully on land. I briefly considered checking out the treasure map inside, but then I remembered the massive detour required for the one at the start of this series. I thought it would be cool to get a screenshot in front of it for the thumbnail, but I got bored waiting for the sun to rise. I ran into yet another ocean monument. I guess that's bound to happen when you travel thousands of blocks by ocean. Fortunately, my impatience paid off, because then I got this much better shot for the thumbnail. I encountered a mushroom field afterwards. There is a 1.18 seed which spawns you near a bunch of mushroom field islands, and that could make for an interesting challenge. So keep an eye out for that series. However, I need to tie up some loose ends first. Anyway, I've also learned from this trip that while I definitely need my horse to have a good jump, it doesn't need to be the fastest horse. My reflexes aren't the best, so there were a couple of times where this journey could have ended in tragedy had Daisy been just a bit faster. Seriously, it felt like half of my time in the ocean was spent encountering ocean monuments. I spotted another less than a minute afterwards. We still don't have a renewable way to get prismarine in peaceful mode, so I guess this is good. I freed some more iron golems, dropped off maps when my inventory got too full, passed by some goats without incident. You know, I don't think I'd mind if goats still attacked in peaceful mode. I get that Mojang probably did that so people wouldn't be surprised by constantly getting attacked, but I think a possible solution would be to just have the screaming ones attack in peaceful mode. Then we could still have the hilarious mischief with goats, but there would be a way to limit or prevent it by not keeping the screaming goats around. I can't speak for all peaceful mode players, but just because I don't want to deal with monsters, that doesn't mean I want zero challenge or adversity whatsoever. I still don't understand why they changed it so that neutral mobs like llamas can no longer attack you back to defend themselves. It seems kinda mean. I have no idea how many ocean monuments I've passed on this journey. I just know it has to be a lot. I also spotted some naturally occurring swamp villagers at this plains village, which generated at the border of a swamp. I wonder if we'll ever get swamp villages, especially in light of 1.19. And here's a PSA to remind you that campfires can and will set your horse on fire. So don't walk over them. Don't worry, Daisy was fine. At about the halfway point in our journey, we passed through this lovely sunflower field which generated between two villages. Not too long after that, we encountered our first swamp hut. I actually don't think I've seen one before in my worlds. Surprisingly, the jungle wasn't as bad to traverse as I was expecting. It's still not my favorite biome to travel by horse, though. I also saw this naturally occurring forest fire, so that was... Interesting. And apparently I had a staring contest with a bunny? I don't remember what was happening because I recorded this gameplay back in October. Maybe I was looking at something on my phone? 
Anyway, despite my efforts to plan as carefully as possible to make sure I had enough maps for this journey, I was short. I think I went too much south and not enough southwest at some points. Fortunately, we did encounter enough sugarcane to make normal maps. They wouldn't have the little indicator, but it was better than nothing. And finally, we made it to the plains biome above the stronghold. The journey to the end was almost over. Until next time, take care.